the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 131 of The Daily Mother Swole. Today's episode is called Active Rest versus Cardio. Uh, Active Rest and Cardio are not necessarily different. They're not necessarily the same. Active Rest is what you do on days when you're not doing resistance training. So rest can be a couple different things. Rest is just a lower intensity of training. Rest is a period of reprieve for your body. It's when you are allowing your body to repair and restructure itself. So if you're adding external force, if you're adding more overload to your body on a rest day, it's not really a rest day. Now, is it? Because if you're overloading your body, that's an external stimulus, that's an external force, that's external resistance, uh, an overload, perhaps, I mean, if you're doing weights, of course, and then your body has to produce internal tension, which causes micro tears and trauma to the body. So that's not really restful. Little things that you can do for active rest, you can go for a walk, you can do a yoga class, you can go for a leisurely bike ride, you can play some basketball nice and easy, we're not talking about NBA or like competitive level. So you can do things that are active, you can go for a swim, you can go running on the beach, but it depends on your experience, it depends on your ability. If you're not really in shape and you haven't really worked out that much, a run on the beach could be very stressful and very intense for you. So you have to make sure that your rest day or your active rest is something where you're being active, you're repairing. It's like a mental cool down, but also that's repairing your body. You're not overloading, you're not stressing. If you never run on the beach and you go to run your run on the beach for the first time, your Achilles tendons are going to be super sore. Your calves are going to be wrecked. You're going to be really achy afterwards. It might wipe you out. You want to recover. You're trying to recover, you're trying to repair. So beating the crap out of yourself is an act of rest. So something light, something casual, it could even be a cardio machine like a treadmill, like a step mill or stairmaster. Could be something like that even, okay? <laughs> Sitting at a desk. No, that's not active rest. That's working on those repetitive movement injuries. <laughs> Funny one. Good question. So uh, one of the things about cardio is cardio, when you're doing like more intense cardio, there's a couple things with cardio is that cardio does affect muscle mass. If you do a lot of cardio because it utilizes a lot of calories and it's very aerobic, that can it will affect how much muscle you can build. Only professional bodybuilders and people that are taking a lot of anabolic steroids that help inflame muscles and build muscle and repair muscles, they don't look flat from doing a lot of cardio. That's why they're able to maintain muscle mass and trim down a lot when they're preparing for competition is because the hormones that they are taking allow for big, thick, full muscles rather than a natural athlete who you, looks generally emaciated and flat when they're dieting down for competition because of low carb uh, eating, and et cetera. If you ever did a low carb diet, you know, your muscles kind of get flat and everything gets depleted because glycogen and sugar is stored in the muscles. And if you're not getting that, your muscles will, as a result, look just flat and kind of meh, like, you know, not pumped up and not full. The, it would have the same shape and the same density as it normally would. So use a lot of calories, but it's also very adaptive. So your body can adapt to, cal uh, to cardio very well. That's why you see a lot of people that are doing cardio regularly hard all the time and they're still overweight because the, the body is very good at adapting. The body is very good at doing and learning an activity and becoming able to do the same activity using less energy. So cardio is actually something your body can get used to. Your body can adapt. Your body can learn how to do the cardio with utilizing less fat, less stored energy. It's like you can learn how to budget your time, budget your money. You can learn how to get through your life while spending less, whereas your body can also do that. It can get through life while spending less. That's why if you're doing cardiovascular, you're trying to lose fat. If you're trying to shock the body with cardiovascular type activity, you need to do more things like interval training and you can mix up how you do your cardio and make it more intense rather than like longer steady state you know, half an hour, a long run, you know, riding a bike 50 miles, those things are less effective for losing body fat than you would ever imagine. Now, in terms of, you know, being beneficial for weight loss, I'm not gonna get too much into cardio being good and bad, but cardio is, you know, that would be if you're looking to lose a lot of weight, cardio would be more effective for losing weight than it would be for building muscle. If you're looking to get bigger and 
get more lean if you're looking for just general weight loss. Cardio can be effective because you're still aerobic and you're utilizing extra calories and you're getting body moving. So you are creating more of a caloric deficit and you will lose more weight when you do activities like that. But the problem is when you're trying to build muscle and you're also trying to lose extra energy and lose fat, your body really has to uh, choose one. Your body really has to choose one and focus on one type of adaptation. Either you're losing energy, either eating less than you're expending, uh, and your body needs to get rid of stuff because it can't hold it anymore, or your body is getting more than it needs and it can use the extra to build. And it makes sense. Your body needs to choose one or the other. That's why to build muscle and shred fat is very, very challenging and generally unrealistic for the vast majority of people. And that's one of the benefits of taking something like an anabolic supplement is your body does change because you're getting unnatural levels of hormones when you normally wouldn't. And a lot of times these different types of anabolic steroids can help protein synthesis, can help increase the rate of fat breakdown that your body will go through so you're able to build more muscle quickly and also get rid of more fat at an elevated rate. But of course, it's unnatural and there's other risks and other factors involved. So genetics does play a role in fat storage. Your diet plays a huge role. Your whole history of how you've been eating for your entire life plays a huge role. There's a lot of different aspects. But active rest during cardio, don't think that just because you're on your off day, you don't and you're trying to gain muscle, doesn't mean you can't go do anything. But if you're going to go expend calories, first off, be careful. Don't get hurt. And if if you're prioritizing the gym and fitness like you should be, don't necessarily go all out. Make sure, I mean, if you're going to play basketball, just because it's an act of rest, in all reality, most people get hurt doing stuff that they're not prepared for. So if you're in the gym and you're bracing yourself and you're stretching and you're doing controlled exercise and you're all prepped and ready for your next set, your chances there of getting hurt are less than when you go and play, hey, I'm going to do some active rest today. All my friends are going to play basketball. And then you go and you put on your low top sneakers and you never play basketball and you end up rolling your ankle because you're not used to the sport. You don't have the right footwear. So if you're going to do something, don't do it half-assed. Don't go for a bike ride necessarily in flip-flops. Don't go play basketball in flip-flops or in flat sneakers. Make sure you're wearing material and using the equipment appropriate for that. And if not, take it easy because if you're prioritizing your fitness the way you should be, understand that your body needs adaptations. And the reason why pro basketball players and people that play street ball can quote break ankles is because they're doing this all the time. If you never play those quick changes of motion, those quick, you know, twisting and landing and you know, sprinting and stopping on hard surfaces, that can really jack you up stress fractures and twisted ankles and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can implement it. The more you play, obviously, the more your body will be aware of those stresses and be able to adapt to it. But if you never do it, just be careful. Understand that you never do it. So you never do it. So your body does not have the capacity to be adapted to it because you never do it. It's like any kind of thing. It's like an experience. If you go skydiving a lot, you'll get used to it because you do it all the time. If you never do it, it's going to be a big physiological overload for your body stimulus and you're freaking out. Your heart's going to be going through the roof. If it's your 10,000th jump, you might still get excited, but it's not the first time. And you all know the difference between the first time and when you have, you know, you're used to something. It's just, you know, it's almost like another day at the office. So understand that your body needs to have exposure to those things when you do your active rest because you could easily get hurt and then fuck, then you get hurt. What's the point? You're trying to recover and rest and be healthy. The best active rest, in my opinion, is yoga. It's also a workout. It's exercise, but it's active rest because you're not adding external stress. However, if you've never done yoga before and it's your first time and you're just starting to do yoga, it's going to feel very stressful. It's going to be challenging. You're probably going to get very sore depending on the type of yoga you do, but that's just part of the process of doing something physically new, but yoga is a great restorative Um, a great restorative tactic and it's definitely definitely more in the category of active rest uh, than it is in terms of resistance and overload okay good stuff i'll stay for a couple minutes if anyone has any specific questions i know everyone was quietly reading and uh, listening in Um, i had read longer slower walks was good for losing some fat while not burning muscle uh maybe at the at the beginning Maybe at the beginning, just because if you go long, slow walks, you're not burning a lot of calories, not getting a lot of caloric deficit afterwards, your epoch, your post-exercise 
consumption of calories is very low because you're not elevating your body's need for activity and for oxygen stores when you're doing your high intensity because you're not doing high intensity. Uh, so your body doesn't really have that afterburn effect as much. It's more movement. It's more of a caloric burn and it can help because it's aerobic. So your body will be burning a higher percentage of fat while you're doing that activity, but your post aerobic burn, so to speak, will be lower. Uh, so you can implement that. You can definitely alternate that with if you're trying to lose weight with higher intensity interval type cardio, but your body will adapt easily to doing long walks. You could lose. Some people are different. Some people can lose a ton of weight. Some people lose a little bit up front. It's definitely a good habit to get into. It's good for your mind. You can think. You can kind of think back on the day and you know meditate a little bit. Uh, but just be prepared for a plateau because you're not going to get shredded just going for like a long slow walk, for example. Okay. Depends on what your goal is. But yeah, you could definitely lose a lot of weight. My mom did that back in, you know, a long time ago. She used to walk like three or five miles a day and lost a ton of weight. But she was also eating, you know, healthier. She was eating healthier. She cut down on the bad foods. She walked three or five miles twice a day. Yeah, you start moving more and eating less. Yeah, you're going to lose weight. So that's what happens. And one of the questions, why do I feel sore for two days? Don't feel sore for two days later. It's called delayed onset muscle soreness. It's normal. Some people get it differently than others. It's just your body's repairing from micro trauma. And that delay of soreness is generally just your body, the nerves kind of coming back to reality and your body reassessing the torn muscle tissue could be also uh, micronutrient imbalances. Um, What's it called? Uh, electrolyte imbalances, things like that. But micro tears, micro tears. I get sore usually the next day, and sometimes you might get more sore two days later. But that's because of the trauma. And remember, if you're sore, more sore than normal, or you're sore longer than normal, could be a sign of overtraining. So I tend to do less than I used to, so I'm not quite as sore because I am starting to believe that, you know, getting to the point where I was traumatically sore, although I had some nasty workouts, it probably does cripple your workout program more than it should because if you're sore really bad for seven days, you could barely walk. It affects doing other exercise and other workouts and other lifts that you can't move your legs. It's just not the way I want to live anymore. So I don't mind being sore, but I go really hard for certain exercise and like I do less because I'd rather be not that sore than super sore at this point in my life. And I know I'm not old, but I've also been lifting hard for 14, 15 years. I do a lot of yoga, but if I'm crippled sore, it's just less of a priority for me than when I was 22 and I'm like, yeah, I can't walk. I just crush it. I still beat the crap out of it. I just don't need to beat the crap out of it for an hour and a half. You know, I'll go hard and I'll do my sets and I might just not do 30 sets of it. I'll do 10, 15 sets hard and I'll crush supersets. You just realize you want to do this. I'd rather do it like in three days um, and then be crippled for a week. What's something that's close to a steroid that works great? There's no such thing. Supplements don't work anything like steroids. There's nothing that you can take for a supplement that will do anything, anything close to what a steroid will do. I'm not advocating uh, steroids, but there's nothing, 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 nothing. What's the best heart rate zone for fat loss? I have a Fitbit. Oh, yeah, I don't follow any of that stuff. I don't really think that's even valuable in terms of like a heart rate zone. You know, there's different, I mean, you want it to be generally, generally, you know, 65 to 85%. You know, you can play around with some lower intensity, longer duration, keep your heart rate, you know, like 60 and 70 for a longer period of time. And then you can, and this is 60 or 70% of your maximum um, from your normal to your maximum. And you could also do interval cardio training where you get above 85 or 90 for like a 30 seconds or a minute and then you bring it back down and you know do like two, three, four minutes at a lower heart rate and then you know start going more intense and bring your heart rate back up. You know, interval, interval cardio. It's not it's not HIT. That's just a whole that's a branded uh, thing. It's not really a, it's not really training. It's just you're getting your heart rate up and you're dropping it down. In interval training, it's just really called interval training because um, cardio, you know, cardiovascular techniques, that, that's been around for so long. And the high intensity thing is just pretty much lifting weights fast. You know, you're doing like cleans and this and this and getting your heart rate up and then you're doing periods of rest. So doing periods of explosive activity followed by periods of, you know, less explosive activity 
what, what that does is it allows you to get into that higher heart rate range more often and more as a total overall. So whereas you can't maintain 90 or 95% for 10 minutes straight, you can dip into that for 20 or 30 seconds and come back out and do that, you know, 10, 15 times and you get your seven or eight minutes or something like that. Yeah. The problem is when you're doing high intensity training and you're doing lifts that are high risk with poor form and with no programming, you know, hard workouts, hard workout. And like I said, CrossFit and that type of training is really what your body can handle until it just breaks down and it can't and it gets hurt. And I heard a great quote and I really forget exactly where it is. I think it was on a YouTube video and the guy said something on the lines of, um, I think it was Elgin intensity. He makes fun of like the CrossFit videos. He does like those reaction videos and makes fun of it. It's really, really funny stuff. He said something on the lines of CrossFit because he did a video, you know, making fun of CrossFit in schools now, which is oh, great. We're, you know, training, you know, at a young age. I mean, freaking Hitler did that, didn't he with the Hitler youth? So <laughs> CrossFit and what, what's going on here is, he was saying that cross like injuries in CrossFit, because someone was talking about how it's safer now, they won't get hurt. CrossFit injuries are like fights and biker bars. Just because you don't hear about them or they're not reported doesn't mean they happen don't happen all the time because they're not rare, they're the norm. So they don't get reported because what are you gonna do? Report a fight in a biker bar? Like it just happens all the time. And CrossFit, yeah, injuries happen all the time. You're not gonna report every one, it's just normal. So it's not like, oh my god, there's an injury. So think about that. It makes it's a, it that, that, that funny quote, I was laughing my ass off, but it makes an amazing, amazing amount of sense, doesn't it? It really does. I mean, how many fights in like, you know, low, like scummy bars are there all the time? I gotta call the cops every time. They handle it themselves. Like, they fight, they throw them out of the bar, and that's it. You know, so it makes sense. You don't report things that are just the norm. It's just, okay. And it's true. It's true. And when CrossFit the mentality, you hold these injuries as like a badge of honor. It's like, you know, honorable to have an injury and people brag about it. And they take selfies and look, my hand's bleeding. It's like, yeah, you know, you hurt yourself. It's almost like I'll be back. You'll be back. Cool. You know, I hurt my shoulder or this, but I'm back. I, I foam rolled it and I used like the wedge and I, you know, strapped on this. I used one of the 9 million CrossFit toys that they came out with to make money. So not to get, that's a little bit off, off topic, but uh, it's, you know, it's the way it is. There's something for everyone. Thank you so much. I introduced into a chiropractor. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, they'll be there. Chiropractors and physical therapists make, have made a ton of money, a ton of money, a ton of money. Yeah. Welcome premium in the house, premium in the house. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 131 of the daily mother swole. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me for episode 131. I will see you tomorrow, Thursday, in the U.S., of course, for episode 132 of The Daily Swole. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your hump day.